my co-host and producer, Kevin E. Hey, Libby. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's our last Friday before the Oscars. The Oscars. Yay. So excited. Oh, my gosh. It's finally here. You know, we've been talking so much about the Oscars this month. We've given a couple of talks and talking here on the show. And I just don't love the non nominees this year i know i hate to say it i don't mean to sound pessimistic but i'm kind of ready for it to be over i know this year. i mean some other years i've just been a lot more excited but I, I always still enjoy it we'll 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 have fun well yeah of course and you know i like to watch it at home alone eating a pizza will you watch it with elise uh yes probably yeah. i prefer to watch alone but and you yeah. but will you have see i have a party to go to that i i'm gonna go to for a little bit but i'm Got to get home for most of it. I can. Luckily, we can tape things now. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that I, I like to actually, you know, devote my undivided attention to. Unlike, say, something like the Super Bowl, right. I just want to talk and eat snacks and drink beer. You exactly. Know? I don't really, really care what's on the TV. Do you like the walk-in red carpet part? I always have it on, and that I will talk through it because that I don't care about. Oh, as see, much. I like that the gown. See, that'll sit with uh, at least my mom or something and critique people and yes. whatnot, and you know, talk. And that, that starts like at four o'clock or something. Starts really early. It's, it's like the Super Bowl. It's like the pregame. <laughs> I know. Now, the Me Too movement, I heard they might be wearing dark colors again, black, and I, it's so much fun to see what they're wearing. Yeah. It's, and the, it's ruining every, everything's getting, nothing is fun anymore. Let's just make it fun and see the beautiful stars and all their glory. They, I heard, too, that their swag bags are going to be full of, like, Me Too stuff, like pepper spray and stuff to, like, um, all these, like, you know. So they're laying it on pretty thick. Yes. <laughs> Which, I mean, there should be a movement, but come on, let's just quit being so political about everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere. There is a time and place for everything, and I don't think that's the time and place, but that's me. Let's, we'll move on. Okay, before we talk about Oscar stuff, and by the way, we have a new Oscar here. It's a little bit bigger. It's not a real one, but that's on it's my bucket list. a little more impress list. impressive to get an actual Oscar? Yeah, well, to buy one, and because, you know, you can't really buy them. But I bet you could get it like an exact replica. An old one. Well, you can buy, so I think I've told you about the Oscar, you have to try and sell it back to the Academy for a dollar. For a dollar. But before you sell it. So obviously nobody sells it anymore because they used to sell it. But supposedly in circulation, you can find old Oscars, like maybe for best... Uh, cinematography or something oh, okay. floating Best around. Sound editing or right. things like that. That aren't that expensive. So I'm going to buy myself one of these days. You should. Can you, can you, is it like trying to buy a fake money? Like you're not allowed to counter Like you can't buy a replica of exactly. it? Exactly. So they want to keep a lid on that? That's, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. yeah. It's very exclusive. So we have a little Oscar here and we have a little new popcorn thing since that's our uh, little system. But we are going to talk about a couple movies that aren't too great before we talk about Oscar Star. <laughs> I saw Red Sparrow. Yeah. You did not. Yeah, a lot of people looking forward to it. I was so looking forward to it. Jennifer Lawrence, and I think she looks absolutely beautiful in the film. It Last night it had like 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was still fresh, yeah. Today. So if it's, what is it if it's fresh, 70? Anything over 60 is still fresh. Oh, see, I thought it had to be in the 70s. In the 70s, I think it's for, it had... It has to be in the 70s to qualify for certified fresh. Okay. Well, it was so it was 69. So I was still today. It's moved down to 52. It is two hours and 19 minutes too long. <laughs> they needed to shave off maybe more than 20 minutes, probably 30 minutes. Yeah. Of it. Um, but basically, Jennifer Lawrence plays a Russian ballerina that breaks her leg, and then something happens, and she has she's offered to be recruited into the Russian intelligence and um, all these things. It, it looked almost like a female Jason Bourne type movie. It was that kind. It was. Did you? Did we get a clip of it? Uh, yeah, we got a clip. Let me. Let, let's show that before I tell you a little bit more about it. Hold on. Let me. It has an all-star cast. We've got Joel Ed 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 Edgerton. Um, oh gosh. Jeremy Irons. Oh no, we don't have a Red Sparrow clip. That's right. Okay. I could not find one that was under like three minutes, so I right. just said forget it. That's fine. Uh, it has a great look to the movie. It's just beautiful. Jeremy Irons is in it. Mary Louise Parker's in it for like a minute, and she's always so good. Love Mary Louise Parker. Does she still look really young? I swear she doesn't young. age. Pretty yeah. She looks good. Yeah, because she's probably my age, or yeah. maybe a little younger. She... Uh, Charlotte Rambling. Do you know that beautiful older actress? I don't know if she's French or English. Um, she has. She was in Dexter. She played Dexter's psychiatrist. Oh, within. absolutely. In the very end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She's in it. Um, Matthias... Shonar, he, I don't know. He plays one of the main characters. He plays Jennifer Lawrence's uncle. And he always plays the Russian or German kind of bad guy. You'd recognize him. He's been in tons of stuff. Gotcha. But um, Jeremy, I mean, this is like an all-star cast. There's it's even a huge a, cast. I mean, oh, I mean, I, I think there's two more I'm leaving off. It, it's a great cast. 
the guy, uh, the guy who directed it, Francis Lawrence, he did Hunger Games, I Am Legend, Constantine, which I liked all those. Films. I liked all those too. Um, but this movie is, well, first of all, it has too much sex in it, which you're like, how does that happen? These red sparrows are trained, they're to be spies and use sex yeah. as a weapon. Well, kind of like a James Bond thing. Yeah, yeah but, but more, too much. And yeah. Jennifer Lawrence is nude most of the movie. Really? It's very odd. That is odd. Because she never showed skin before. Never before. Movies. Yeah. Um, it was too much. It's like, man, she really went off the rails uh, on I mean, the nudity gee, thing. Uh, <laughs> full frontal stuff with uh, several people in the movie. I kept looking at my son. We were together. I'm like, what is happening? That is odd. I literally said, what is happening? <laughs> and we said, he was like, he was like, oh, I'm with my mom. This I, is uh, awkward. It's weird. And it was so disjointed, the story. It's just like, I was so confused. And at the end, it all kind of comes together, so it's worth waiting. Like, I'm glad I didn't leave. Um, it's really stylized. It's cool. But the story is just disjointed. I think all these wonderful actors got together and were like, this looks like it's going to be good, and it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, that happens a lot, though, when you have really star-studded casts, though, that it yeah. just ends up not when, working. Like you said, sometimes when it's star-studded, it makes for not a good movie. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. It seems like that you was and I've talked about kind that. of the case here. I'm going to give it half-popped. Because, yeah. Here we go. Yes, half pop. Sorry, I wanted to give it mildly popcorn worthy, but I just don't think I can. It just didn't make the cut. It just didn't make the cut. So, and you saw Death Wish. I was gonna. Uh, thought we were, yeah. um, if you want to touch on Annihilation first. Oh, look, I, I started with Red Spark. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what threw me off. We'll see. I'm just. No worries. Off. We've had a busy day. We have had a very busy day. We we, talk, we've had a busy couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. We, we spoke at a group with a group, fun group today about the Oscars, and we were there at like 9 this morning, so we're a little tired. But um, Annihilation. So tell us about it, Kevin. We both have seen it. We both have seen it. Um, the premise, there's this strange entity that's expanding. It almost looks like a dome. They call it the Shimmer, and it's the basically Shimmer. this world that's developed inside of it, and the main character, Natalie Portman, her husband's been in there for years, and no one's ever come out before. But he comes out, and um, it's it's very obvious in the beginning. It's almost like um, Vincent D'Onofrio on Men in Black when he's wearing the alien suit. This guy's oh, yeah. skin. You know, it's like really obvious that it's not actually him. It's, it seems like it's something else right. because he doesn't seem to know her at all. It's very odd. Um, and then he almost immediately starts breaking down health-wise, which I still don't even know that I can understand completely. But he starts yeah. dying, essentially. And that's when she and another research team composed of all women go into the Shimmer to try to figure out what's going on. Well, because she's a biologist. And she's a biologist, and yeah. And she had also served in the military. Yes. Along with her husband. Yes. And Who's Oscar Isaac, if I didn't already say that. Oscar Isaac, yeah. Better known, you know, as Poe Dameron from Star Wars. Yeah, and he wasn't in it enough. I mean... And he's not in it at all. And, I mean, a little bit, but the beginning and a little towards the end. And at the beginning, I mean, The Shimmer, I thought that would have been a good name for a movie, but that may have already been a name. Yeah, I mean... I, Annihilation. Annihilation's kind of a weird name for it, honestly. At one point, you understand something as... But, I, Kevin, I mean... <laughs> I was trying to convince my girlfriend to see this movie, and she's like, How, can you can, like explain in any way what it is? And I'm like, I kind of looked at the trailer as being almost a Jurassic Park meets Aliens. Right. And that's that kind of does feel like that, because you have these crazy monsters inside mm -hmm. that they're after, but um, it's also very science fiction oriented. And Jennifer Jason Leigh's in it. Yes. But There's it, always the one person in this type of movie who is a little screwy, and mm -hmm. she's definitely that character. She's great in it. Um I, it's 80 something percent on, maybe 89 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. I, uh, do we have a clip on that one or no? Mm hmm. Want me to go ahead and roll it? Sure. You got it. What was that? Don't know. What happened? I heard a noise. Oh, what? Something's come through the fence. Through the fence? What's going on? Shepard was just next to me and something took her. Shepard! Shepard! And 
Something, though, now that I'm looking at this clip, mm -hmm. uh, something I just remembered that bothered me about mm -hmm. this movie is for being military people, they seem to make really bad decisions. Like, they set up their base camp in what seems like would be the easiest place for any of these creatures to get them. Then earlier in the movie, yes. an enormous crocodile comes out that they have to kill, and it doesn't die easy. I mean, they have to <laughs> empty, like, several magazines into it, and then they decide to travel by boat. I'm like, why would you go into the water after that? Oh, <laughs> you know, I didn't even just, think about that. There could be part. hundreds of those in there. I mean, it's yes. just, but uh, you know, just a minor, minor, minor things that yes. Yeah. I, but what do you think? I'm like, I liked it. I was shocked. I thought it would be the exact opposite. My girlfriend loved it, and mm -hmm. I was a little confused. I was I, confused. I enjoyed it, but there's just a lot of it. I mean, and I love this kind of sci-fi stuff. But there's a lot that I sent, looking back at it, I'm like, I just do not get it. I think I need to see this a couple more times. And she's kind of explaining it to me, and I guess she's making sense when my girlfriend, she's telling me afterwards. Yeah. But I'm like, I still don't get it. Does, don't does she like science fiction movies? She does, yeah. Because that's why I always have to go to you. I'm like, I don't understand. This one, I, I, I kind of understand. Like you said, I think I'm going to need a rival I needed to see a second yeah. time. And I totally got it the second time. It has this feeling of a more like sci-fi. Like it's very into the sci-fi genre. Sci-fi mm -hmm. people will love this movie forever and analyze it and all kinds of stuff. It just has one of those more interesting sci-fi feels, but it's kind of like the thing in terms of the monsters. Things are morphing and shaping into different things, and there's right. crazy creatures, and it's this team that's kind of isolated, and they don't know what's going it on. It does remind me of the thing. It is a lot like the thing, yes. but it's much more sci-fi oriented, much less action and horror. I think it might be based on a book, too. Yeah, I think a you're right. A science fiction series or a book or something, but we, we could look that up. But um, give it, give it, what it what's your rating on our little... I'm going to go popcorn-worthy for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I will, too. I'm going to do more mildly popcorn-worthy. Yeah, me too. But definitely, it's a... You know, if you're wanting to go see something this weekend of the movies that are out, go see it. Yeah, go check it out, especially if, you, if, especially if you're a sci-fi fan. Definitely look at it. Don't you think it's a tiny bit too long? It's a tiny bit too long. Not not like 20 minutes too long, but maybe 10 yes. minutes. Something could be shaved It could off. definitely be shorter. The pacing is not very good. Pacing slow. A lot of it is very slow, and you're thinking, I thought there's going to be more scary action type stuff. Like with a movie like The Thing, but no, you're not going to get that. That's what I said to my son when we walked out. I said the pacing was slow. Yes. And I got up to go to the restroom, so that's always a sign that it's a little slow. Yeah, true, me. I did too. And I mean, but if you're into like the classics, like the day the Earth stood still, um, mm -hmm. War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. even or uh, Solaris, some of those old sci-fi yeah. movies that the genre nuts love, I think then the, yeah, you're there, there, there's going to def, have definite fan base for it. And oh, Natalie yeah. Portman, I I just love her. She was really really good. She's good in everything. I mean, here she's so lovely, almost like an Audrey Hepburn little dainty bird and just she's playing kind of a badass in this yes and i would say um the other two characters besides jennifer jason lee and natalie portman are pretty pretty forgettable i mean they're not interesting at all no and the one the one who ends up i don't want to give away yeah. a scene but that kind of goes crazy on them isn't that was a terrible actress oh, <laughs> it's just really bad yeah i i no. but I, you notice they always have to have that kind of character in these types of movies it's just like vasquez and aliens like they yes. always have to have like this tough kind of butchy female character right. I don't know why, but I don't either. What's that about? But yeah. no, you're you're right. But I think I might see it again. Yeah, I think it's worth seeing again. If you, if you I'm, I'm not going to go out to the theater to see it again, but I'll no. definitely check it out when it's on HBO Go or Netflix. Or At something. some point. Yeah. Did you actually go to you to the theater? Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it in the theater for sure. Oh, that was good. And I had to see Death Wish by myself though, because I'm like, I just can't drag so my girlfriend to an Eli Roth film. Oh, because so you've seen two movies in a <laughs> yes. week. That's big for you. Yeah, it was great. Not like me, where I see a zillion. <laughs> I try to see a zillion. Was there one more we wanted to talk about? Yeah, yeah. Death Wish. Okay, okay. So Death Wish. Tell us. I, I loved. I don't even remember you. I was a young girl when I saw it with uh, Charles Bronson, the original one. I loved it. Base a vigilante. His family's wiped out and he goes on this and then it made for how many more i mean uh, i think there's like six or seven and they none of them were as good but the no. first one was very upsetting to me because just some terrible things happened to his wife and child and um so i thought i was excited about the remake but, i mean most of the upsetting elements are still there because i mean this okay. is an eli roth movie the guy who did hostile and cabin fever and the green inferno so you know oh, there's okay. going to be excess uh right. violence which you, you go into because i mean the right. the Charles Bronson ones were pretty violent, especially pretty violent. for that time. Back, yeah. So Bruce Willis and who else? Is a doctor, is which is always kind of funny. Like Bruce Willis is a doctor. Oh. But then I'm like, oh, I guess it worked in The Sixth Sense also. So. But it wasn't in the original one. He wasn't no, a doctor. No, they, so yeah. they switch up a few minor things. But right. for the most part, it's I mean, it's a retread, like an exact retread. Uh, is, who else is it? Anybody else that we know? Uh, Dean Norris from Breaking Bad is in there. 
Who is? Uh, Dean Norris, who played Hank Schrader. Okay. Um, and then Vincent D'Onofrio, who I was just talking about from Men in Black, is in there. Oh, okay. As an antagonist. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's... That's about it. That's about it. Um, Runtime, it's pretty short. It's coming in at just, uh, I think it's a little, I think about two hours. Yeah. That, that's good. And if you like the original, and if you like super hardcore in the original, mm. then you, you might not like it because you're like, oh, they didn't need to remake it. The original's great. But if you kind of just liked the original a little and thought it was pretty cool, like me, I occasionally would turn on those mm -hmm. movies every once in a while, then you're going to like it, I think. It, it, it maintains that same kind of theme, but it's a little more modern. It's, it's very violent. And I think Bruce Willis and the Paula Kersey character is like perfect. Right. And it's getting awful reviews, and I don't think it deserves that bad it's reviews. It's getting really bad. Really bad reviews, like 13%. Now, when Bruce Willis came out with A Good Day to Die Hard, and it was mm -hmm. like 13%, I was like, there's no way it could be. I love every Die Hard. That movie was horrible. Yeah. This is not like that. It's it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's entertaining. Okay. Well, uh, let me ask you this. The first one is has this kind of cool New York gritty look to it that I, I enjoyed. The, the, this movie, the trailers don't look like they have this gritty cool look it definitely you know has saying? its own kind of color and tint like look to it it's it's kind of very blue gray the way they shoot but you know i'm it. talking about that kind of i can't explain it uh, just to yeah i know exactly what you mean that, i wondered if it has that same feel and look and see i would have to go back and, and watch see the old original yeah one. to make a comparison it's just been years since i saw that i mean and it came out i think 1974 yeah so i was like a preteen or something yeah and i saw it a little bit later because i remember it maybe keep, keeping me up at night you know, as a young girl seeing something be yeah. raped and murdered or whatever. It's yeah. Um, but but it was one I went on to because you're it, you know being the vigilante father, you know, you're like, ooh, I like it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> do we have a clip on that one or no? Oh yeah, let's go ahead and roll okay. a clip. Dad, the kitchen's clean. I'm going to bed. Okay, honey. Hey, can you help me with this? Just a little Why bit. are you moving mm -hmm. this? Because I need you to come over here. I just saw somebody run by. What do you mean know. you just I saw someone run I by? I just saw you someone run by here? I did. I did. I want you to get Dad? under the stairs. Dad? Why are you putting me under the stairs? Dad? Call the cops Where are you right now. Dad, please be Take careful. Take your phone Dad, and dial 911. <laughs> 911, what is your emergency? There's men are breaking into my house. They're on my front lawn. I think they're here. that it that is it okay so he was home when it happened or yeah this I mean, is later um no this is around whenever and when everything happens oh because see in the original charles bronson isn't home he yeah. comes home to find them there's some minor things that right. they switch up and they're both okay never mind i don't want to take anything away from because the setup yeah. is really entertaining so and i'm just gonna say if you thought the anyone out mm -hmm. there who thought the idea of a death wish movie sounded cool mm -hmm. Definitely, it's worth going to see for the people who are like, "That looks awful." That I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy a ticket because I don't think it's worth it. But overall, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it popcorn, popcorn worthy. worthy. Well, I totally. We'll show our deal. Popcorn worthy. <laughs> Always makes me happy. Here's the deal. I was so hoping for Bruce Willis that this would be like a Taken or a uh, yes, Die Hard a for him. Yeah, for Bruce Willis. Yeah, and then we'll, he'll, it'll be great, and then there'll be another one and another one, and then we'll, you know, yeah. so maybe not. But I'm but definitely going to see it. I mean, I don't think the original Taken got that great of reviews, and no. I love that movie, so there could be. Loved it. But I, I'm going to see this, y'all, so we'll and see. Honestly, I would have rather seen a new Die Hard than a Death than this. <laughs> well, <laughs> Die Hard had a little humor to it. This doesn't seem like it has any humor in it. A little, little bit. bit. Yeah, a little bit. Very Bruce, little. Bruce Willis can't not be funny, yeah. really. He's just got that smirk. He does. And he's very good at playing the cool-headed, you know, because yeah. granted he was a doctor, but quickly he turns into, it's, it's almost like a superhero movie. Yeah. Like a guy who basically was a, had nothing, was a doctor and then takes revenge to the streets and goes out there and is basically killing criminals. Okay. And, and people in the, are like fascinated with it. That's another good thing. It's like people are talking about him in the media, and he's almost known as like this anti-hero. <laughs> right. It's pretty cool. Well, he, he, M. Night Shyamalan, he's going to do a follow-up to Glass or one of those with him. Uh, the follow-up to Unbreakable, yeah. Yeah, I can't. I'm looking I think forward it is to called, that. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Speaking of. He's also heroes. supposed to be in Die Hard Year One, which I think is a terrible idea for a movie. Oh, but, really? Yeah. 
Oh, gosh. You don't need a prequel to Die Hard. No. Die Hard's supposed to be like, that's the first time yeah. that this happened to this guy. Like, yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. But I'll be going. I'll see it to you. I will be going, and I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> should we? Okay, how much time do we have? Oh, we've got about five minutes. Let's. Should we go over the Oscar stuff? Just, how about, let's One talk, last recap. Let's just say, everybody knows, let's just assume y'all all know what's put up for Best Picture. I'm, Kevin and I, I think, are in agreement that with Best Picture, we think... Shape of Water is going to win. I think uh, Three Billboards. Three Billboards is? Mm -hmm. I think one of the two. But I don't want it to be. I mean, if I had to pick, I would pick Three Billboards. Yeah. Um, it, it, did we think any others were in the running? Oh, people are saying that um, I'd, I would like Lady Bird to win, but it's not even close. Um, people are saying Call Me By Your Name is kind of the dark horse. Mm -hmm. Like Moonlight last year. Yeah. So let's not rule that out. But I hope not. I mean, I liked it. I thought, but I... Three billboards would be my pick. I think it's Kevin. Think he's picking three billboards. I'm yes, saying absolutely. Shape of Water, possibly. Yeah, but I mean Del Toro for director. Oh for yeah, sure. D director. We think Del Toro um, is going to win. Who else did we think? Um, I want it to be Greta Gerwig because she's a girl, a woman. She wrote, directed, it's about her life. A lot of people. There also the dark horse is Jordan Peele for Get Out because he's the first African American male That's true. to be nominated. He's but the dark horse. I would be so. astounded. You'd be astounded. One. And uh, yeah, just because it's, I'm, I was astounded that it was nominated. I'm too. Against it's just Peele, not but. done that well. I mean, it's a great movie and it's a great story, but it's, it has a little bit of made it for TV cheesy, yes. cheesiness to it. It doesn't seem like Oscar material. No, no, but it, it's very clever. Very clever. Um, we're thinking best actress. I think it should and will go to Frances McDormand. Your thoughts? Agreed. 100%. 100%. I'll, I mean, Margot Robbie is a close second, though. I thought she was fantastic. She was great. Yet. I took my husband and his son to see that, and they're like, that was so good. Yeah. I remember That's that story great. so well. You were a baby when it happened. Oh, but, I remember that, though. Oh, I remember it sure. so well. But then remember, O.J. Case came right afterwards, so yep. that died down. Okay, best actor. We both think he will and should win Gary Oldman. Absolutely. For sure. Um, supporting actor, we think it will be Christopher Plummer, possibly. But it, we want it to be Sam Rockwell. Yes, I mean, God, am I just speaking been... for you too much here? No, 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 not no. at all. I, I completely agree. I just I would love to see Sam Rockwell win, but yeah, but like it could I was be. saying, the, an achievement in filmmaking, I think, or in acting. Yeah, Christopher Plummer's that's quite a, a feat. But he is, I said, the long. He is right now holds the Oscar for um, the oldest Oscar, so he'd be even an older yeah, an Oscar winner now. Oscar winner. So best supporting actress. I think it's a no-brainer. It will and should be Allison Janney. Yep, agreed. Um, some people are saying Laurie Metcalf for Lady Bird, which I thought she was great, but it'll be Allison Janney. I think so. Um, Timothy Chalamet is nominated in. He's in three Academy Award nominated movies. The kid from Manchester by the Sea last year. What is his name? He's in several movies. It's just funny how there's. Oh, the guy that was in The Father in Call Me by Your Name is in The Post and Shape of Water. Isn't that interesting? That There's is. like three actors. That yeah, are... the Timothy Chalamet guy. I mean, yeah. that's insane. For, at that age to be in three Oscar nominated Oscar films. Movie, yeah, right. movies. Kind of a little six degrees of separation yeah. deal there. Um, but that have a good career. <laughs> yeah, but I guess those are our picks. Oh, and who got snubbed? We think Molly's Game got majorly snubbed. Aaron Sorkin, big time snubbed. But what did he get? Um, Best or uh, Adapted Screenplay. He yeah. Got that nomination. I thought on I, Tanya was snubbed. And I know Hollywood can't stand him anymore, but the guy is really talented. I thought Kevin Spacey was great in Baby Driver. Oh, okay. That's what everybody, all my stuff I read about, everybody's like, Baby Driver got snubbed. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Kevin Spacey. I mean, he just is big sick, Battle of Sexes, The Disaster Artist, Greatest Showman. I, th I, I think all the, uh, I think the biggest upset to me here as far as snubbed is All the Money in the World and Molly's Game. And Molly's Game, I agree. You never saw All the Money in the World, did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I did see all that. I yeah. loved it. But Molly's Game. Best. It almost surprised me when it came out that Christopher Plummer, Christopher Plummer was supporting character because he seems like such a main character in the movie. Yeah, you think he's yeah. like a lead character. But I guess um, – who is it, the guy? Is it Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. Is, okay, he would be the lead, I guess. He was the actor. lead, yeah. 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 But, I mean, Michelle Williams I was expecting was him great. to get nominated. I think yeah. she's a snub. I keep forgetting That's to true. say that. She was – the way she had that aristocratic accent, I thought she was just sensational. And she's into big blockbusters this year, that and – the Greatest Showman. Yeah. Yeah, but she was great. That's a good point. She's fantastic. I keep forgetting to mention Michelle Williams. Well, that's a little quick recap. 
Kevin, you have anything else to add? Uh, nope. Okay. We're good to go. Well, y'all, I always say go now, enjoy the movies, but go enjoy the Academy Awards Sunday night. And we'll see you back here next week at 3 o'clock.